So uh, my name is Ben Manley. Uh, this is my 12th cohort or 13th cohort. Uh, I've been doing this for quite a while. I've had the wonderful opportunity to kind of come into GA and hit the ball roll, or hit the ground running with teaching and take a curriculum that has been kind of tweaked by a number of different instructors and just really hone in and pinpoint the things that should be learned during this course and just really, really focus in on them and make the content better and better and better. Um, one of my personal goals in every co cohort I do is to take feedback from the students and from the other instructors and take what we've taught and make it better for the next group. So not to say it's not good, but I, I'm a firm believer in the fact that everything our, our curriculum can always be a little bit better. And, um, you know, you're all, y'all are the lucky recipients of the 12th iteration of this content that we've gone over and over and over. So, um, I think you're in a really good spot. Um, another thing I'll say about our instructional team is that, uh, you know, of all the the teams that GA, I think we do a, a pretty phenomenal job of going above and beyond with, um, you know, communicating and and working individually with students who reach out. Um, I you'll hear me say this a lot during the first couple of weeks, but uh, Jurgen and I, and uh, you know, your lead instructor and your associate instructor, uh, including Jackson uh, Reeves, who's your who's going to be your TA. Um, we're real human beings. Like we're not just robots built to work for GA. Like we want you to do well. And when you have a problem with something, be it something with your code or, you know, something goes on in your life and you need somebody to talk to about it. We're here. Our doors are open. You can reach out and, you know, we're here more as just instructors, um, are more than just instructors. We're here for pretty much everything, you know, We've both been through this process. We know what this is like. We know how stressful it is. Um, and, you know, one of the things that helps this process is if you have somebody that you can kind of go to for empathy and to, you know, be able to talk to about what you're feeling, what you've got going on. And um, uh, we are here for that. So don't feel like you can't knock on our door if you've got something going on. Um, I'm very much not the kind of person that wants to be called Mr. Manly. Like, don't do that. I'm not Mr. Manly. Just call me Ben. Like, I, I'm, I was in your shoes, you know, four years ago, taking a boot camp. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to go through a career change. Um, I spent about 20 years of my life in like upper level re multi unit restaurant management. Um, you know, I studied chemistry and physics in college was working at a Jimmy John's restaurant of all things during college and ended up running several of those, um, like through a district manager position. And, um, you know, five years ago, my wife was like, what are you doing? Like, this is miserable for you. Why don't you go into something that you're actually passionate about? So I made a career change. I pivoted into uh, software development and absolutely loved it. I took a program and through doing that, realized that I absolutely love teaching and that's where I'm here now. Um, uh, my best friend, David Stinson and I, who's also a lead instructor, who's actually working on the product team. Uh, you'll see David around. Um, he and I have kind of built this curriculum from what GA offers as their standard and just made it like a hundred times better. So the curriculum that you're going to get when you come through the course is just I think the best curriculum that GA has to offer. So I think y'all are in a really good position. So we're going to have some fun. Um, but before we get going, um, this slideshow is, it's got a lot of stuff in it. We're going to give you access to this afterwards. So don't feel like you need to write anything down. I'd rather have you listening to what we're saying than trying to frantically scribble things down to, to remember them. You'll be just fine because we're going to give this to you afterwards. Um, another thing here is that, and this is a huge, huge, huge point for, um, really just everything in general, not just a slide deck, but everything in the course, um, we don't expect you to pick things up immediately. Um, you know, there are going to be people here that take this course that kind of know a lot of the stuff in unit one already, because they've had some basic web dev stuff like how HTML, CSS, and JavaScript work. 
Uh, and there are going to be some people who have no idea what a terminal is and how to do anything with the command line. So what I ask is that in unit one, we all have some grace and like approach the situation with a, yeah, I know this, but I, I understand that so-and-so doesn't and just try not to get frustrated if you feel like we're going too slow. Um, if you feel like we're going too slow and you want extra stuff to do, come talk to me. I'll give you plenty to do. I don't have a problem with that. I've got, I've, I've got all the things that I can have you working on. If you feel like you're already caught up on this stuff. Um, uh, also another thing you can do is if you see someone struggling on something and you know what you're doing, help them out, take it as an opportunity to be a, you know, a, a guide and a mentor for them. The relationships that you build during this cohort are going to go and serve you for the rest of your lives. You will meet people in this class that you're going to be friends with forever. Um, uh, you'll hear that on Friday. We've got an alumni panel coming, uh, previous graduates of um, my and David's uh, cohorts that will essentially come back and tell you what what the course was like and give you an opportunity to ask questions from them if you don't believe us on on anything. And uh, and that's typically what they say is, hey, the you're in good hands. Just make sure that you reach out when you need help and, and make sure you introduce yourself to people because that's really how you're going to set yourself up for best networking for moving forward. 70% of you are going to get jobs from other people that you know. The other 30 are going to get them from like cold calls and like applying the traditional way. But you'll hear this when you start going to your outcomes classes. It's very much about who you know and uh, you know who you've made connections with. So the place to start doing that is here where you're able to talk, you know, uh, talk about the things that you've built without any judgment because that's, you know, we're in a judgment free zone. So good times. Um, I've already introduced myself. Um, again, I'm, uh, or my official hours of availability are nine to five Eastern, but I am obsessed with my work and I am always on Slack. I might get little, bing bongs on my watch anytime somebody messages me so um best time to re to reach me is during those hours but i'll probably respond if it's not during those hours um i'm located austin jason uh austin texas adjacent i uh, probably live about 40 minutes away from the city uh out on lake travis so that's where I live. I'm in central time zone. So I have to get an get up an hour before y'all. Um, I am obsessed with uh, Internet of Things technology. I love tinkering with little microcomputers and building things. Um, it's always been a hobby of mine. And I love kind of translating that into what I do, building cool stuff that I can play around with that actually kind of furthers uh, the things I learned in the course and gives me opportunities to kind of develop that knowledge that's it's really what this course is about is not so much teaching you how to code, but teaching you how to learn how to learn how to code um, so that you can take what we teach you here and apply it everywhere. So um, like I said, I've been here since 2019. Um, love teaching people how to, co how to code. I've probably just shy of a thousand graduates right now that I've helped through the program. Um, I'm also a member of the product advisory board where we, work with the product teams to try to get them, um, you know, advice and content to make things the best that they can be. Um, David Stinson, again, who you're going to hear me talk about all the time, dude's my best friend. He's also one of my instructors here, uh, or an another instructor here. He was a student of my first cohort, actually, and I got him on board because he was so good. Um, he and I have written 90% of the content that you're going to have when you take this course. Um, and it's, it's good. It's really fun. It's relevant. It's like, for lack of a better word, hip. Um, but we're going to have some fun with it. So, uh, look forward to that. Um, the best way to get in touch with me is Slack. Please don't email me. I'm, I don't check my email. I've, I have no reason to check my email. So I don't, um, just hit me on Slack. Um, I'm the one that's been making all the announcements in your classroom channel. So you should be able to get a hold of me pretty easily. Um, Jurgen, you tell everybody about yourself. Yeah, sure. Good morning, everybody. Hope you all are doing well. My name is Jurgen. Uh, he and pronouns. I am obviously available nine to five 
Eastern time, though I am located in Chicago. Yes, I've seen Shameless. Uh, I do live in the neighborhood that it's uh, or close to the neighborhood that that show is based on out in the south side of Chicago. I love skateboarding. I've been doing it for a really long time, since 2005. I love to learn world languages as well. I can speak Spanish fluently, uh, conversational Italian, and uh, beginner in uh, Bosnian. And hopefully I can learn uh, some more, maybe some Mandarin or something. One from each continent would be pretty rad, right? Maybe speak penguin or something. Uh, hang out with those guys, slide around. Uh, I Because I love learning world languages, I also love learning coding languages such as uh, JavaScript, Python, C Sharp, Ruby. I forgot to throw Ruby in there, but it's okay. Uh, you end up catching patterns. So uh, the pretty much what Ben was saying earlier, just uh, you're here to learn how to learn. And you'd be surprised how far that takes you. So um, embrace this, uh, these, these three months. They're going to be a life-changing three months. And try to get to know everybody as much as you as quickly as you possibly can you'd be so surprised how much that benefits you in the long run uh yeah you can get in touch with me via slack please don't email me either i'm not gonna read those i only read my emails if my boss or ben reaches out to me sends me something so please reach out to me on slack and you could connect with me on linkedin as well uh, reach out to me if you need anything you know uh you need to talk about something you're overwhelmed you could definitely reach out. I'm I'm not gonna be like, oh well, you know, that's not really my department. Like if if something's really going down, you can definitely reach out and be like, hey, you know, I'm really struggling. What can I do? Uh, I would be more than happy to help. Uh, excuse me, more than happy to help. Yeah, we're not just robots here. Uh, do not suffer in silence. I'm gonna keep saying that every day. Okay, it's I I I you paid this much please reach out and say something if you need to. And yeah, let's have fun doing this and Godspeed to you guys. Cool. Um, this first intro slide deck is just kind of some norms some best practices, things to follow for the course, um, tips for success. Uh, again, it's being recorded. I'll pop this into our class YouTube channel when we get done where you're able to access all the videos. Um, you'll be able to access any lecture that's been recorded, uh, as well as uh, previous versions, previous iterations of these lessons from other cohorts. So everything that I've taught is on that YouTube channel, separated in playlists by cohort. So the tr treasure trove of information there, uh, YouTube video-wise. And so when you go there for the first time, I would highly advise uh, either bookmarking or subscribing to that channel so that you can find it easily in the future. Um, let's talk about Zoom. Uh, the first thing that you should be doing on Zoom is be present. Um, you want to make sure that you're set up in a distraction-free zone, uh, set boundaries in your household, let everyone know that you're going to be unavailable during class hours. Um, that way you're able to direct your full attention to what we're doing in class. Uh, you must be on camera for the entirety of class unless you need to step away briefly. Um, if you do need to step away, it says to let us know here, but realistically, let's, let's use our best judgment on that. Um, you know, bathroom breaks, I'm going to give you at least 10 minutes every hour, uh, five to 10 minutes every hour to use the restroom because, you know, that's how human beings need to operate. Sometimes you need to go to the bathroom. So every hour you can expect at least a five to 10 minute break so you can use the restroom. Um, what you don't want to do is walk away and leave your camera on uh, or just turn your camera off and not turn it back on. Uh, one of the biggest things that we as instructors are able to do is look at your faces as we're teaching and get a read for whether or not you understand <clears throat> a topic that we just went over. Uh, I've gotten pretty good at being able to read through looking at all of your faces, whether or not everyone understood something I just talked about. And if there's this mass confusion, it's usually pretty easy to see in everybody's eyes. So um, just make sure that you've got your cameras on. 
Uh, on the flip side there, like if you have to walk away to your from your computer for like 30 seconds to go get a door or something like that, like somebody's knocking at the door or, you know, you need to go, you're going to be gone for 30 seconds, just turn your camera off and come back. Please don't send us 700 messages every time you need to stand up from your computer. Um, but your goal should be not to have to stand up from your computer while I'm teaching because it's going to be distracting for you and it's going to be distracting for everybody else. So. I think we've built things in a way that you shouldn't need to do that if you've set up your area ahead of time. So you should be good to go. Um, attendance is also taken partially from responses that you have from questions. We'll talk about attendance questions a little bit later this afternoon. But the other part of your attendance is that if we don't see you on camera for all afternoon, say you answer the attendance question, but like don't have your camera on all day, we're going to mark you absent. So. Just make sure you're on camera. Um, be mindful. Um, you've got to be on mute while I'm talking or while Jurgen's talking uh, when you're not speaking. This prevents background noise from impeding the group's learning. We're pretty good at muting people when they go off mute, but just we're in a professional environment. So just watch yourselves. Like if you see that you're off mute, then just mute yourself so we don't have to do that for you. Um, make sure that you're also in a well-lit space uh, with as few distractions in the background as possible. Um, if you are in a place where you've got roommates and your roommates are constantly walking by, use a background filter like this. I don't have my wife and pets are the only ones that live in the house, but um, these background images can be uh, can limit distractions by kind of wiping out things of interest in the background that people could focus on. So it makes it a little bit easier for everybody. Um, for Zoom, uh, your pop-out uh, bottom and top pop-out toolbars have some uh, important features that we're going to need throughout the course. Your bottom toolbar has mute and unmute buttons so that you can mute and unmute yourself. There's also a start and stop video button. That's how you turn your video off and turn your video back on. Um, again, you can turn your <clears throat> toggle your microphone button by doing the same with the mute and the unmute. Um, one of the other things that we'll eventually have everybody in the class do is share your screen by clicking on the share screen button, that green button that says new share when you hover over that zoom bar. Um, you can select the screen you'd like to share. We'll have plenty of practice doing that. The first time you share your screen is not going to be during your presentation. You'll share well before that. Um, uh, again, be careful when you're sharing your screen. Some people, as they're learning how to do this, share their entire computer. And some people don't have appropriate things on all of their computers. Again, we're all adults. Make sure that you don't share something on your computer that should not be shared with another group of like-minded adults. So um, just check yourself. Um, so please watch out. What? I told them we've seen some stuff. So yeah, please oh, watch yeah. out. Very mindful. Um, if you need to get someone's attention, if you have a question, the best way to do that uh, starting off is going to be to raise your hand. Um, Nine times out of 10 with a class this small, I'll probably just ask you to come off a mute during lecture if you have a question. Um, but realistically, we'll, we'll start off probably this first week just by having everybody raise their hands when they have a question. So that doesn't mean to go like this, although I think you actually you can turn it on so that when you raise your hand, it actually does that for you on Zoom. There's some feature, but I must have it enabled or disabled. What you're going to want to do if you have a question in the class is you're going to want to go to the reactions menu and there's a little thing that says raise hand and if you raise your hand it reorders the video of the people that raise their hands on the screen so everybody try to raise your hand Getting there. And getting closer. 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 Two people left. One person left. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. 
Cool. I'm not sure where Tommy is, but everybody else, nice job. Okay. Now, we're, now that we're done with that, we can put our hands down. So if you hover back over the reactions, oops, hover back over the reactions, we can go to lower hand. Nice work. All right. Uh, if you want uh, larger, uh, Tuan, did you have a question or did you just forget to get your hand back down? Okay, perfect. You're going to hear me ask that a lot over the first week. People are going to forget to put their hands back down. It's chaos. It's great. Um, oops. Uh, if you want to view more people at once, there's an option in the view settings under gallery to view more people in the class. I can't remember what the Zoom default is, but it's if you don't feel like you see enough people, that's what you do. So um, typically, again, you're going to be using that to raise your hand to ask a question during lecture. We highly, highly, highly recommend that you do that. It usually takes a little bit for people to start asking questions in these channels, uh, just or in the on Zoom, just because they're kind of apprehensive. Um, Y'all need to get over that quick. Um, we are all friends here, and if you're the only one asking questions, uh, it, it it can feel awkward sometimes. But I guarantee you that about ninety percent of the students in the class would have asked that same question given the opportunity. So. Just make sure that you're being outgoing. If there's something you don't understand, just say it. Let us know because I can explain it a different way. We can talk about it, you know, with more context and and try to help not only you but all the other people that were probably confused by that same idea. Uh, try to understand the topic a little bit more. So it's it's important to be vocal when you don't understand something. Um, and if you feel that that goes on for pretty much everything we talk about then shoot us a message in your instructor chat and just be like, hey, you know, most of the stuff we went over today went completely over my head, which is normal for a lot of people at the beginning. So just communicate with us is, I guess, what I'm trying to say, because being able to communicate with us is how you're going to get through this course. It's a course not only about learning how to learn how to code, but about communication and, and building that network. Um, but... Yeah, it says here, use your hand to react in Zoom to get our attention. Uh, don't send me a DM during a lecture. I'm not looking at Slack. I'm looking at Zoom and I'm looking at my code. Uh, but if you raise your hand, I will see you pop up on my screen on Zoom. So I'll be able to see you. Um, you'll notice that the chat features in Zoom have been disabled for this classroom. Um, it's because it's wildly distracting and not where we want to put messages. Slack is designed and set up for messaging where you can put code blocks and useful information. The Zoom chat feature is just, no. So we're not using it. It's disabled. Um, what to expect from office hours? Um, you're going to be working with two over the, well, the first week you're going to be working with Tylus, uh, but after that you're going to be working with Jackson Reeves uh, for your TA hours after class. Uh, Jackson is one of a kind, He's probably the best TA that we have at GA. He is absolutely amazing. So um, highly, 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 whether you need it or not, recommend going and meeting Jackson uh, and talking to him about who he is, what he does, and get to know him for when you need help with questions on your homework uh, or your labs or your projects or things like that, because he is the one that will be able to guide you to um, solutions and to, to learning how that stuff works. So um, you can go either as yourself or as a group, uh, go by yourself uh, or as a group to TA hours perfectly acceptable. We encourage that you work in groups for a lot of the stuff early on in this course. Um, but yeah, all you have to do to go to um, uh, TA hours is just to hop on the same Zoom. And it's from 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Monday through Thursday and noon to 3 p.m. Eastern on Sunday. So this Zoom will be open. You'll be able to hop on. There's a queue system 
uh, and you can get all the help you need from TA hours. So that's how that works. Uh, does anybody have any question on even evening and weekend hours? The only only day of the week you don't have office hours is Friday. Okay. Is it IO? Yeah, so question. Do we get time for lunch? Yes. Lunch okay. will be 11 a.m. to well, Eastern time. It'll be noon to 1 Eastern every day. Okay. And then do we get, um, like, if we want to just stay in the office hours while we're doing our assignments, is that okay? It's encouraged. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. Great question. It's sometimes it's really beneficial to kind of hear other people's issues and learn from them, even if you're not actively doing something to fix them. So absolutely. I would highly encourage that. Good question. Keith? Sorry, I had to unmute there. I apologize. Um, okay. You, you said the only day is not, uh, it's not available as Friday. I'm not seeing a Saturday time there. Um, uh, Saturday, yeah, and sorry. Friday and Saturday. Okay. Yeah. I, I just want to double check and make sure I was looking at it right. So. Yeah, okay. no, you are. You are looking at it right. I'm just, I'm just tired. Nope. Uh, no, you're yeah. good. You're good. I just, okay. I appreciate it. Cool. All right. Um, and you will be able to see all the uh, calendar hours when we eventually get to uh, we'll talk a little bit about this later, but we have this awesome app that you all installed and should be somewhat familiar with at this point called Notion. And let me adjust the this so you can see the whole screen. We'll talk more about Notion as we go, but Notion is set up so that um, uh, you have access to this awesome tool to help you navigate pretty much everything for the course material and whatnot. Um, we're one of the few GA cohorts that actually uses this, which blows my mind because it is wildly simple compared to what everybody else uses. Um, but if you ever need to get to the calendar and check that out, you can come to your Notion hub, you can go down to calendar, and you'll literally be able to see every single day and what we're doing. So you'll see that at 1030 Central this morning, this should say 1130 Eastern if you're uh, looking at this from an Eastern time zone computer. Um, you will have uh, uh, intro to Notion. So we're gonna actually go over Notion and how it works and how to use it uh, then. And every single day that we have is laid out item by item. So you can always look at your calendar and know exactly what we're doing that day. Um, you can look again at like things like this, like our lesson for tomorrow. It tells you what the learning objectives are, what the setup process is, what you have to do to get set up, what you have to copy and paste into your thing to get it going. And then once the setup is done, we launch into the lesson and that's where we talk about all the fun stuff. So the, this has been set up for ease of access. All of our lesson contents in one nice, easy to find place. All of our extra tools are here. There's this awesome little panic button like, hey, I, I'm stressed out about something or having a problem. I don't need how, I don't know how to solve it. And there's just good tips here for you on everything. Like, oh, I don't think my project is awesome as my classmates, or um, I feel like everything we've done is too easy or too, too hard. Like if you click on those, it gives you tips to help deal with some of those things so that you can put yourself in a better position. So there's a lot of stuff in this notion. We really, really uh, highly encourage that you explore it. Keith, do you have a question? Cool. I just forgot oh. to put that down. Sorry. And th that's going to happen all the time the first two weeks. It's quite all right. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a fun little icebreaker game. Uh, I'm going to pull up my attendance sheet here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, stumble through your names in the attendance roster and ask you, what's your preferred name? Uh, what are your preferred pronouns? What's your metro area? And if civilization has ended and you must contribute a survival skill to the group, what do you bring to the group? So we're going to start off with Aya. Aya. 
Okay. Hi, my name's Ayo. Um, that's my preferred name. Um, my pronouns are she, her, hers. I'm in the DC metro area. So if you're in DC, I would love to connect. Um, and if civilization has ended, I would probably be the listener that everyone like goes to, to like vent and complain. Um, and my friends have told me that I'm a really good listener. So. A good skill to have in this class. Excellent. Nice to meet you. Uh, Brooklyn. Sorry, I couldn't find the mute button for a second. I'm Brooklyn. That's my preferred name. Um, she, her pronouns. Um, I live outside of Salt Lake City, Utah. Really beautiful mountains out here. Um, and my civilization has ended skill would probably be I'm a runner, so I could run messages between camps of people. I could carry the messages back and forth so we can communicate. <laughs> I like it. That's a good one. That's a good one. Cool. Um, Carla. Hi, my name is Carla. Uh, pronouns she, her. I'm in the New York City area. I'm actually in Queens by JFK, so you'll hear the planes. Um, I consider coffee an essential food group and how I start my morning, so I think that would be my like survival skill is like contributing coffee and finding a way to make coffee for the group. Excellent. Coffee is super important. Um, I'm actually, I've, I've got a weird situation going on with coffee. I got uh, COVID about, I was last August, and... I have like the weird post COVID smell issues and coffee is one of the things that smells like, I don't know, like rotting cat food when I smell it. So every time my wife brews a pot of coffee, it smells like death in the house. Really hoping that goes away soon. So I, I hear you. I miss my coffee. So cool. Cherry. Um, hi, my name is Cherry, like the fruit. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and I live in the Philadelphia area. And my um, skill would be like project management, like, you know, trying to get things um, back on track and maybe some sort of leadership um, to get everyone aligned. So. Cool. You'll do well in unit three when we have to have group work. So it'll be fun for you. Awesome. Uh, Colin. Do we have Colin? We do not. Okay. Uh, what about Dan? Hey, I'm Dan. Um, preferred pronouns, he, him. Um, I live in the New York City area, also Queens, but Ridgewood, so a little further out. Um, Civilization has ended. Um, sense of humor, not very helpful, but you know, a joke here and there. That's a good thing. Yeah, I, I think that's what mine would be. I, I'm very, very fun at, when it comes to that. So good to know. Cool. Uh, Electra. Hi. Um... So my name is Electra, but I would prefer to be called Ellie. Um, my preferred pronouns are she and her. I live in New Jersey, Bergen County area. Um, my skill would be that I would bring art, art to the group. I sing, I play the piano. So I think that that would be helpful to just, you know, get out of, you know, the survival situation we can um, get some peace with music and everything like that. So, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Um, NS? It's actually NS. Uh, NS. Okay. Is my, my, my name. It's pronounced like the two letters NS. Uh, pronouns he, him. Um, I live in Queens also in Astoria. Uh, in New York, <clears throat> my civilization ending skill would probably be, I guess, construction. Uh, I deal with real estate a lot. So I guess building the house, maybe getting some food together, some traps. Mm. Cool. 
uh, Tron. Tron, Nugent. Mm, looks like you're muted. Sorry. Yeah. Hi. Um. My name is Tron. Um. My preferred pronoun are her or she her. Uh. I currently live in Toronto area around Queen and Dufferin. Um. I think my survival skill would be I'm good with dealing with animals, so I can take care of all of the animals if you know. Yeah. Cool. That's a very important skill to have. Lure them in so we can eat them all for dinner. <laughs> uh, Jacqueline. Hi, I'm Jacqueline. My preferred pronouns are she, her, and I'm in the Baltimore area. And I guess my survival skill would be, I like to find the silver lining in certain situations so I can kind of help people see a maybe the positive side of something that may not be going so well. So it's always good to have an optimist in the room. So that's <laughs> good to hear. So nice. Um, next up, we've got Jonathan. Or John, Jonathan. So my name is Jonathan Tucker, and most people call me uh, just Jonathan or Johnny. So uh, my pronouns will be he, him, and I stay in Canada, um, the city of St. John. Uh, my skill will be uh, uh, probably some kind of problem solver because if the civilization ends, uh, there will be like panic all around. And I'm kind of good at keeping composure and coming up with uh, ideas in times like that. Just keeping my core, you know, and bringing ideas late leading the way to rebuild rebuild i guess excellent that's always a positive skill to have um keith hi um my name is keith uh preferred pronouns would be he him i live in wichita about eight hours up the road from you and um Think of civilization, and I spent about fifteen years in the military as a combat medic. So I would, I would work on the medical side of things, I guess, in the civilization ending event. So cool. I, I actually it. lived in lived in Wichita for about a year when I was doing uh, restaurant manager training. So uh, oh, did you? I know, I, I know where your restaurant would be. I order from it all the time up the road here. So if you were in Wichita, there, that probably the one on Twenty First Street would be my guess, but. Gotcha. That was the new one. I uh, I started oh, well, on the one that was uh, I started run the one that was right next to the hospital. Um, oh, downtown uh, there. No. Yeah, Wesley. Yeah, the one that was right next to Wesley. So, got you. No. Uh, cool. I lived right in that little neighborhood. It's a beautiful little neighborhood out there. So, <laughs> I'm glad you survived that. By the way, right there by Wesley. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I I some days I miss it, and then I realize it was Wichita, Kansas, and you, but yeah. There we go. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Uh-huh. Uh, Maria. Sorry, I always forget to unmute. <laughs> My name is Maria. Um, pronouns are she, her. I live in Jersey City, New Jersey. And I think my survival skill would be encouraging everyone to keep their routines because it doesn't matter what's going on around you. It's a great way to take care about yourself. Very true. Always good to have a source of positivity. So, cool. Matthew. Hello. My name's Matthew. I, I can just go uh, call me Matt. Um, pronouns would be uh, he or him. Uh, metro area. Uh, I'm by Charlotte, uh, North Carolina. And um, I guess if the civilization ended, I'm kind of handy and I'm a mechanic. So, you know, if there's a car that still works, we'll, we'll go with that. Cool. Good way to get around after everything's everything's gone. So love it. Uh, Magunta. Hello, everyone. My name is Magunta and my pronoun is she or her. 
and uh, right now i'm living in canada halifax city and my preferred skill is i'm a very good observer and right now i'm learning cooking cool what's your favorite thing to cook i like to cook uh, south indian food uh, biryani that nice. is my favorite nice that's your favorite um, I do love some good biryani. My wife lived in India for a year when she was in grad school, and uh, she's taken me some pretty awesome Indian places, and biryani is one of my favorites. Um, I love to cook uh, Italian. My grandmother was Italian, and that's one of my favorite things to cook, but I don't like recipes. I like to kind of just do when I cook, and my wife hates it, but she likes the food. She hates the process, but it's all, it's all good. Cool. Uh, you should get into the GA cooking channel. There's some, uh, it's been a little quiet lately, but there's usually some good stuff in there. Cool. Nice to meet you. Uh, Nafia. Hi team. This is Nafia. Uh, just like mafia, but with an N and this is also my preferred name. Um, my preferred pronouncer, she and her. Um, I live, I live in the eastern end of Toronto, close to the beaches area. Um, so if you're around Toronto, let me know. Um, more than happy to meet. And so I'm known as the babysitter and also the cat sitter in the group. So if um anybody like need help with their babies. Um, kids, far babies, taken care of during that time. You can just uh rely on me. Good stuff. Uh, Nathan. Hey, everybody. I am Nathan. Uh, you can call me Nate. Um, so my prefer uh, preferred pronouns are he him. I'm from Boston. And if civilization ended, um, I am a big like physical fitness person, just exercise, lifting, that kind of thing. I feel like it's probably going to be a good skill in uh, the post-apocalypse. So yeah, we're going to be in the post-apocalypse, which is a bummer, but we're all going to be super jacked. So that's going to be great. That's true. You have a, a last name that is indicative of the world ending. Have you played Horizon Zero Dawn? Or Horizon Forbidden West. Oh, yes. Yeah, I have. You're right. Yeah. You're right. No, I, oh, that, I know. That's in the future. We have <laughs> we have a long time. Yeah. Before then. That's yeah. That, for those of you that don't know that Sobek is the last name of one of the protagonists of that that um video game. It's one of the best video games I've ever played. The prequel, not the sequel, or the first one. So good stuff. Love video I games, by the up. way. If you ever want to talk to me about video games, let's do it. So I'm probably about 10 to 15 hours away from finishing uh, Baldur's Gate 3. I was trying to finish it before this cohort started, but 80 hours later, and I'm almost there. So hopefully I'll wrap that up soon. I want to anyway, see that. It's, yeah, it's, it's good. Just don't play it on a Mac because Mac is still early access. I learned that the hard way. Um, I had to get it on PC instead. But cool. Uh, Randeep? Um, hi, my name is uh, Randeep, but I prefer Robin. Um, I'm from Indiana. Uh, and my civilization um, skill would be like entertaining people. I love singing. I love uh, making people laugh. I'm, I'm like wild. Not wild, but like, you know, I really love just smiling, you know. So, yeah. And uh, yeah. I just love working out and uh, singing. That's about it. You sing while you work out? <laughs> uh, no, nah, no, nah, nah. I just listen nah. to my own music. Yeah, there you go. You have to send to some of your playlists. There's a couple music channels we listen to, or we have for GA where people can share music playlists. So it's in a different language, but yeah, I'll send it through. Yeah, sounds great. Awesome, uh, Ronald. Hi, everyone. Uh, my preferred name is Ron, and my pronouns are he, him. Um, from Staten Island, New York City, if you can't tell by my accent already. Um, and my 
civilization skill would be um i was an electrician for a couple of years so if we need a power supply then maybe i can figure something out nice very cool stuff samson Hi, uh, my name is Samson. Uh, I, I live in Columbus, Ohio. Uh, my survival skill would be running and climbing. Okay. Um, Sophia. Um, I'm Sophia. My eyes are sheer hers. I'm from the New York tri-state area. And a survival skill, I could start a fire, and I can also pitch tents. Nice. How would you start a fire? Use like the flint scrapings, or you do the not necessarily some friction. We also need some wax. So like gotcha. As well, I learned it well, a lot. That's awesome. My wife and I have been on and off watching that alone show, where they just like put a bunch of people out and like northern canada and like expect them to survive like five or six things it's always always a good time so cool uh steven steven i officially get to make fun of steven because his brother was in the cohort so buckle up buddy yep all right uh yeah i'm steven uh or steve whichever um uh pronouns are he him i'm from uh the long island area middle of long island and i was gonna say um starting fires for my apocalypse thing but that was taken so i'll be uh, I'll, uh my, my job before this was uh working with children with special needs so i guess i could handle that cool. but also light some yeah. fires too but appropriate ones you know yes <laughs> and st we, we don't want any fires anywhere down here right now i'm in wildfire yeah. country like one fire will <laughs> will, will be very bad my wife and right. i actually have a a go bag and like emergency oh, plan wow. of action because we live in the woods down here so it's scary scary shit but cool. cool um thomas uh <clears throat> my name is thomas i guess my preferred pronouns are he him and i live in the augusta georgia area and i guess if civilization ended my skill would be, I guess, I like to build stuff and work on cars. So mm -hmm. that would be like skills that I would bring. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Tony. I didn't see Tony there. I met Tony this weekend. No, Tony. Okay. Uh, Tuan. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Tuan. You can call me T. Um, I refer to now is he, him, and I live in a, a Quincy, near Boston, Massachusetts, and I think my survival skill is cooking. I'm cooking well with the Chinese and Thailand and some Vietnamese people, and when you stay with me, I think you never stop it. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome sauce. And finally, Walter. Hi, my name is Walter. My preferred pronouns are he, him. I live in Brooklyn, New York. And I guess for a survivor skill, I don't know if this is a skill, but I'm just really into sports. I feel like maybe I could start like a little, you know, league within us. It'll bring us together. And maybe I can work with Nathan. You know, he can be the fitness coach, keep everybody fit, you know. So I feel like it'd be a good way to de-stress from the world ending. I like it. This is a very good plan. I like your shirt. Do you skate too? Uh, actually, surprisingly enough, I don't. Oh, but well. I like the shirt. Brad, you got, you got Jurgen all really excited there. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, we're gonna take a short break. Uh, why doesn't everybody come back at five after? So we'll take eleven minutes. So be back at well, ten oh five Eastern, nine oh five Central, and we'll keep going. Get up and. All right, well, let's keep going with this. Um, what to expect from us, your instructors? Um, we make every possible stride to be fair, just, and equitable. Uh, one of my big, big, big things is I'm always going to be as honest with you as possible. Uh, I expect the same from you. 
um, in that vein, we don't always know everything. We're going to be in lessons where something come up or something will come up. Somebody will ask a question and either myself or Jurgen will be like, you know what? I don't know the answer to that question. And that's perfectly reasonable. That happens. Um, and I think the process that we take to find a solution to that answer is something that sometimes will happen, uh, you know, asynchronously. Sometimes we'll be like, you know what? I'm going to look that up when we're not in lesson. I'll get back to you. Uh, sometimes it happens during the lesson. And those can be extremely productive learning experiences where everyone in the room gets to learn, hey, like, here's here's how we would go and look that up something not something that any of us knows but let's take this little fun side detour where we can all go learn something together um and i think a lot of times that's a really good experience because it gets you know everybody to see how other people think which can be really beneficial when you're talking about how to learn so um we take your feedback seriously and always want to be improving this is a big part of my job uh because i'm always kind of, I, I don't want to say obsessed, but I always want the curriculum that I teach to be the best curriculum that I have access to. And one of the things that has made this curriculum so good that we teach from is that David and I have spent the last three years just refining and revamping and rebuilding the curriculum with newer, fresher examples, better code, better practice things. Um, you know, new, using newer convention for a lot of the way that we do things. So you're getting the hottest, freshest off the press stuff that we have built. And it's really, really, really good. Um, David, who I'm sure you're going to meet at some point, like I said, the dude's my best friend. Like he was one of my students when, uh, uh, when I first started teaching and he instantly became an instructor after that. And he and I have gone through a lot <laughs> Uh, building an awesome curriculum for y'all. So we're going to have a lot of fun. Um, we uh, will talk more about feedback in a minute because there's a, a lot of opportunities for you to give us feedback. But um, the feedback that you give us is like we read every word of it and we want to use it to make things better. So um, we also do our best to set expectations ahead of time. Um, you know, I set the expectation with InstallFest on Thursday. So I gave you plenty of time, plenty of notice. Um, if you waited until the last second to sign up for Slack, probably didn't see it until last night. But, you know, there's we're everything that we do is trying to set y'all up for success. So we're going to give you as many opportunities as we can to um, uh, to be set up and to give you things that will help you be set up. So that's kind of how we roll. Um, where you should be today right now here in this moment um you must have completed the pre-work in its entirety okay if you haven't you need to be in touch with your admissions producer because you are not where you should be okay i know every once in a while they give like extensions to people but if you haven't gotten that done you are officially behind and will be behind until you finish that because this is a boot camp it's going to get hard you're going to have a lot of stuff to do and if you're coming into the program behind it is going to be hard for you to catch up. So if you are not done with the pre-work, you really, really, really need to talk to your admissions producer and get that finished like yesterday. Um, please let us know if that's the case so we can make sure that we push things along with that, get you the resources that you need. But that needs to be done like already. Uh, you must have also turned in a code pen link to your lapis papyrus, scalpelus, whatever the hell it's called, the, the rock, paper, scissors thing they had you build. Um, you should not be employed part-time or full-time. Um, this is not a hard and fast rule, but speaking from experience, if you have a job and you're taking this course to change your careers, if you're working 40 hours a week, 96% chance you're not going to make it. And again, I'm not telling you that to be an asshole. I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just talking about previous experience. This is a hard course. This course takes a lot of your time. And a lot of people think, well, I can take the course during the week and I can work on the weekends. Your weekends are going to be infused with writing code. That's what you're going to be doing all weekend is writing code. Every day, every night, you're going to be writing code, looking things up. 
And if you are trying to work, it is not going to happen. You're not going to be able to focus on what you're doing. You're going to be distracted. I've seen less than half a dozen people make it out of 12 cohorts. So not saying it's not possible, just saying, I'm again, I'm just trying to be honest with all of you because I don't want any of you to be put into situ into a situation where you think you can do it and think it's going to be easy. If if you have to work, let's have a conversation about what we can do to mitigate the work school balance thing because it's going to be a challenge for you. And I'd rather be a part of trying to help you with that than sitting back and watching you just suffer and be miserable because that will be the case if you don't reach out for help. Um same thing with college courses. I just don't, please don't do that to yourself. There's no reason to do that to yourself right now. Um, you should be physically and mentally prepared for the course. I know that sounds a little weird, but um, it, this is, it can be draining. There are going to be tears, I promise. Um, you know, it's part of the thing that we're um, trained, not really trained for, but like, we expect as long nights and breakout rooms, like people break down. It happens. It's going to cut kind of, that. I know this stuff sucks to talk about, but again, I'm trying to be honest with you and, and give you the reality of the situation. It's tough. And I, I want to emphasize again that my door is always open. Like I've been through this. I've helped tons of students through this. Like if you feel like you need to hop into a breakout room and cry, let's do it. Let's hop into a breakout room. Tell me why you're frustrated. Vent. We'll get you onto a plan and, like get you into a place where you're able to feel better about stuff. Um, unit one that usually manifests itself as I'm studying this stuff and I I understand what it is in the lecture and then I go to do it on my own and I just hit a brick wall and then I freeze and then it, and people just melt down. That's normal. Okay, don't try to hide your feelings um, because that's just going to, when you, all the time it takes to try to bury those feelings, it's just going to add more and more stress onto what you're feeling. Just let it out. Talk to me. We'll get in a room. We'll hash, hash some shit out. You'll be good. I promise. I'm good at this. I'm good at defusing these problems. You just need to let me know. Let me work my magic. Okay. Um, you should have a support network. Okay. This is, again, it's huge. Um, if you have a rough day, and you need somebody to talk to that you don't want to talk to your instructors, which again, you can, we're here for you. Um, it's really good to have other people to rely on. You know, if you have a significant other at home or, um, you know, family or even like a pet that you can, you know, rant at while you're playing fetch with them or throwing them some yarn or I don't know what you do with other pets, but you're anyway, have, have something that you can rely on some sense of, or some, method of having joy in your life. And not only that, some way to disconnect. Um, taking breaks is really, really important as you go through this course and being able to like, you know, go play with a pet or like just go outside and touch grass is really, really, really important. If, you know, you're not in a place that, ha that ha if you have grass outside, I, I know it's like 108 out here right now. So I'll touch couch instead of touching grass, but you know what I mean? Um, you should attempt to limit your obligations between now and the end of the course. Um, if you know that you're taking the course and you know that it ends on November 14th, I would probably not schedule like something big that's going to take a whole weekend between now and November 14th. That's, you know, stuff happens. If, if stuff, stuff does happen and you need to be away for a weekend, just let me know. We'll come up with a game plan for fixing it. Um, and making sure that you learn all the things that you need to learn. Uh, and this last one is actually one of the most important, uh, the right motivation. If you're here because, and again, excuse my frankness on this, you saw an ad on TikTok for making lots of money as a developer, uh, and you don't know what this is, and you're not interested in this, you should really evaluate whether or not you want to be here. Um, I you've got to want to do it to succeed in it. You've got to enjoy it. If you know, you're going through this and like a one, one or two units into the course, you're just like, I don't like this. I kind of fucking hate it. Like, what am I doing here? Like we've had students like that before. And 
it's better to realize that at the beginning and have a conversation with somebody and say, Hey, like I may need to like pull the, pull the eject handle. Do you pull an eject handle up or do you pull it? I feel like you pull it up, right? Yeah. Pull the eject handle and, um, and, and get out of the situation before you've spent $16,000 and have this piece of paper that you're never going to do anything with. Right. Like, if you're really not interested in being here, you should probably say something to somebody so we can have a conversation about it. And conversely, that also happens with, I don't know if I'm built for this. And I, I've had that conversation with, I have it with a handful of students, every single cohort. Um, there's a difference between thinking you can't do it and not wanting to do it. And if what we do on a daily basis for the first two units is something you just absolutely hate and despise, then you probably shouldn't be here. But if it's something you find difficult but enjoy, that's a different story. Then we work at finding ways to make it less difficult for you and keep you engaged, keep you interested. And that's what we're here to do. So just, just talk to us. Let, let us know how you're feeling so we can help you make decisions like this or so we can give you all of the appropriate information to be able to make decisions like this. Um, you should prepare to spend at least 60 hours a week in class working through labs, assignments, projects, outcomes, deliverables. Uh, Monday through Friday, you're going to be eight hours a day in class. Um, your labs, access, assessments, projects, outcomes, deliverables, probably about 20 hours a week. Um, you're going to dream about code at night. I know that sounds crazy, but you're when you go to bed, it's the least restful sleep you'll ever get in your life. You're going to go to bed and in the middle of the night, you're going to wake up and you'd be like, why, why am I dreaming about how JavaScript functions work? Like this doesn't make any sense, but it's going to happen. I guarantee you within the first week, at least 90% of you will have had a dream about code. It's unnerving and horrible, but it's part of the game um, because you're going to be spending a lot of time on this stuff. Another thing to keep in mind is that everyone's coming in with a different experience level. Um, we see this the most in unit one, because unit one, we cover the fundamentals. We cover JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. And a lot of the people coming into this program have already had kind of some practice with that because it's the easier stuff of the stuff we teach. So it's important that everybody coming in realize that, you know, we're not all at the same place in unit one. And some people have a vastly different skill set. This course is set up to teach you all of the things that you need to know to succeed. Like we teach you everything that you're going to need to know. So even if you're coming in not knowing anything about any of those things, uh, you're going to be fine as long as you follow the plan we've got for you. You cannot be concerned about what other people are doing. That's what I'm trying to get at here. Okay. Unit one, that's tough for a lot of people who have never coded before. You know, we had a student a few cohorts ago who was a, um, a waitress and she had never touched any code in her life. And every every project was, well, my project's not good enough as so-and-so's. And it's like, yeah, but you're here for you. You're not here for so-and-so. And she did great in the course. And it, you compare yourself to you. Am I a better person? Do I know more than I did yesterday? And that should be your your bar. And that should be the bar that you're setting. Is not, am I better than so-and-so? Am I better than myself? And if that bar is continually moving up, then you're moving in the right direction. So just always remember that. Um, <clears throat> again, if you have a job, please talk to me because just I just don't want to see that, that dumpster fire realization later down the road just like let's just talk i'd just rather talk to you about it now and come up with a game plan than have your life implode because you can't deal with it um it's just easier to nip nip it in the bud and, and figure out a solution at the beginning uh this is going to be your life for the next 12 weeks by the end of this week you're going to have access to an app that will allow you to check your attendance and submit and view feedback for deliverables throughout the course it's called clippy um, GA does not have an app to be able to do that. So David and I built one. So it's actually pretty, pretty dope. That's Clippy right there, the Flamingo. Clippy has an origin story that we can talk about sometime. Clippy's cool. Okay. What to expect. This course is stressful and fast paced. Okay. 
Sometimes it's going to take a few days for the material to sink in. Maybe not so much in unit one, eh, some of the stuff in unit one, especially once we get to unit two, where we're like, it's going to feel like drinking from a fire hose. Okay. It will take time for this stuff to sink in. It is not all going to just be like, oh, Ben said it. I instantly understand it. It's just not how this works. There's a lot of material. So you've got to give it some time. Give yourself some grace. Give yourself some time to be able to absorb the material. Um, failure is the path to learning. Uh, you're going to get frustrated. You're going to get discouraged. You're going to break things. Breaking things is how you learn how to code. Okay. Nobody goes through this program or any development program with the right answer every single time in their code never breaking. That's not realistic. It's not. It just doesn't happen. Um, you have to be okay with failure. You have to be okay with errors. One of the biggest obstacles that a lot of people have that haven't coded before is dealing with errors when they first start happening because they see this big thing on their screen like, your code doesn't run, and they're like... Eh. <laughs> It's, it's okay. Errors are okay. Errors are our friends, especially with the ones with all the printouts that say, hey, you have an error, but it's because of this word here on this line and this, this part of your code. Um, we just have to learn to embrace the errors and figure out what they're telling us. And when you start learning about <clears throat> how to read those errors and what they mean, you'll be in a much better position. And we do a very, very good job of teaching you how to do that. Um. I already said this, but I'll say it again. You can't compare your pace to those around you. Um, you're going to drown in self-doubt and imposter syndrome. Set goalposts on yesterday's you and just be better than you were the day before. And as long as you keep doing that, you're going to be in a good position. Um, don't fall back behind on outcomes work. Outcomes is your job support post-course. They're going to be giving you things to do. If you're falling behind on that, you're falling behind on being able to get a job. So um, the market right now is tough. Um, my wife works for Expedia, so I have a pretty good barometer of when ma major tech companies are hiring. And they're just now starting to open their doors again. Um, and that's kind of true across the board at major tech companies. So, you know, a lot of the people that have been laid off as of late are kind of getting back, getting their feet back in the door, but the market's really tough right now. And in order for you to get a job, the last thing you want to do is slack off on your outcomes work and not do the things that our outcomes coaches who are tasked with getting you jobs are telling you to do. Please follow what they're asking you to do and do it effectively and do it within the time constraints that they give you. Because the longer you put that stuff off, the longer it's going to take for you to start getting that paycheck. Hey, Ben, may I add something really quick before we move on? Um, sure. Regarding the success, read carefully. Like this pertains to the errors that Ben was talking about earlier. Don't be afraid to read, uh, especially with documentation. Read that carefully. Do not just scan over uh, what it is that's uh, being presented to you. Read carefully. You'd be surprised how far it's going to get you. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Um. <clears throat> this chart, the emotional cycle of change, I think does a great job explaining how you might feel in this course on a hour to hour basis, a day to day basis, or even over the course of an entire unit. Okay. Um, let's take, I don't know, uh, MVC architecture for, for instance, one of the things we're going to learn about in unit two is called MVC architecture. At first, when we talk about MVC, you're going to have this level of uninformed optimism. You're going to be like, oh, cool. We're learning about this fun new thing called MVC. No idea what the hell that means, but I'm excited about it. And then as we learn a little bit more and more about it, you're going to go into this informed pessimism. Like, oh, God, this is, there's a lot here. This is this is. This is a lot. MVC is more than just three letters. It's like a whole architecture of how we put apps together. And there's a lot. And oh, my God, this is overwhelming. There's really, really a lot here. I don't know how I'm going to handle this. I, I help, help, help. Red flag, red flag. And then through working with us and working on the labs that we give you and getting practice, you're going to start moving back into this. I, I can do this. I'm starting to understand this. 
And then by the end of working on your project for that unit, you'd be like, I got this. I can do this. I know what this is. And I'm able to, to write code and, 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 you know, build an application using MVC architecture. This is something that you are going to go through this, this little cycle of uh, emotional change. You're going to go through this all the time in this course. You're going to learn something. You're going to be excited about learning it. Hopefully you're excited about learning it. If you're not excited about learning it, any of this stuff, then you should probably just like fuck around because you need to be excited about this. But um, you're going to go from being confused to sad to kind of happy to ecstatic. And you're going to, you're going to have that, you're going to have those feelings fairly regularly. So get used to it. When you're here, talk to us. Let us know so we can do something about it and help you and push you in the right direction and put you in groups with people who feel better about it or like pair you up with somebody that like is also looking to pair up with somebody and like work in teams like this. It's just we know how to help you mitigate these problems. You just need to talk to us about them. And when you're here, let us know so we can say, hey, you got this. Either here's some extra stuff to go and keep learning or, hey, so-and-so is really struggling with this. Why don't we pair you up with them so you can go work with them? You can continue to like cement this knowledge in your brain and get some experience talking about this with another person and trying to help guide them through it, uh, which is how you really learn something. If you want to learn something better, the better way to do or the best way to learn something uh, when compared to every other method is to be able to teach it. Uh, if you can teach something to someone, you're really cementing your knowledge of that topic. So Take every opportunity you get to be able to, you know, share your knowledge with other people if you're given that situation. Okay, um, we're going to talk about some tip, uh, some tips to stay healthy during the course. Again, I know this sounds ridiculous, but if you're not doing this stuff, your body is going to start disintegrating because <laughs> you're going to be at your computers a lot. Uh, especially those of you that are coming from jobs where you're on your feet all the time. That's This is how it was for me. I was on my feet 80 hours a week. Uh, and I went from that to taking a boot camp where I'm sitting almost all the time. Um, you're going to put on a lot of weight if you're not watching what you're eating and, and how you're exercising. So establish a regular sleep schedule. You're going to want to work late into the night. Please don't do that. Try not to do that. I know sometimes you kind of have to, but like you need to sleep schedule your sleep schedule to be regular. You need to exercise regularly, um, especially again if you're coming into this uh, into this boot camp from a position where you're on your feet all the time. Your body is going to feel really, really gross after a couple of weeks of not like moving around. So make sure you're taking time to take care of your body. Um, eat healthily. Please, over lunch, don't eat like a triple bacon cheeseburger and six pounds of fries. Because if you do that, you're going to come back from lecture and you're going to pass out. Okay, Cheeseburger coma is real. Um, eat, <laughs> eat appropriately for class. Like, you know, don't have seven bagels in the morning. It, like, just, just take care of yourself. Okay. Um, go outside touch grass or snow or whatever whatever you have. Um, it's important to take breaks while you're working. One of the best ways to get around solving something that you're blocked with is to just stop, get up, go outside, and just take a walk. That's what I do when I get frustrated with something. I throw my headphones on, I go outside, I walk around down near the lake, and I come back and I, I'm rejuvenated. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to work on something again. Um, there's nothing wrong with doing that. In fact, if you're working on something and you're stuck on something for more than like an hour, you should get up and walk away and then come back and ask for help. Put it in the, we'll talk about an engineering channel that we have here where you can post your issues, but um, you've got to protect that mental health because that's what's going to get you here through the course. Um, you have access to a an app called ginger.io if you're able to talk to licensed mental health professionals if you feel like you have to or need somebody to talk to it has nothing to do with GA it's a third party organization um, but if you want to talk to licensed people about mental health stuff that is something that you have access to via GA um, 
low can get you set up with that. Uh, she's your student success uh, correspondent. So if you need help with that and haven't already gotten an email, I would reach out to Lo and she will help you with that. Um, your instructors are not professionally trained mental health providers, but we're glad to listen to what's on your mind and share resources. Um, but obviously professional boundaries. Um, full disclosure, we put that slide in because we had like vent sessions with some students during some cohorts that turned into every day we're going to go into a breakout room and cry. And that gets to be a bit much. So we're here to help you, but just know that we're, we don't, we can't get into a breakout room with you every single day and like be your therapist. Like we want to help you with your code. We want to help you overcome, you know, the coding part of this. But when it comes to a lot of the stuff you've got going on on the side, like you should talk to a real professional about that because we're not really that for you. So happy to help, happy to listen, always here for you, but just know the boundaries. Io. You're muted. Okay. Is it realistic to expect to be able to um, like have a social life? And when I say that, I don't mean like drinking on the weekends and stuff, but you were mm -hmm. mentioning like support systems. Mm -hmm. Like, have you seen people navigate like being able to hang out with a friend on the weekend or like, oh, you absolutely. know, their bike through town or something? Yeah, no, that's, that's completely feasible. What, what I would do is like, hey, do you want to go hang out? Like if you have a pet, like, hey, let's go hang out at the dog park for a few hours or hey, let's go get dinner or grab a beer or something like that. That's feasible. What wouldn't be feasible is, hey, let's go take a, you know, day and a half trip to a national park and go camping. Like that's the kind of stuff that's a little bit less feasible. So you're definitely still able to have a social life, but uh, you know, and again, some of your weekends are going to be busier than others. Some of them you're going to be cranking away at a project and you're not going to want to go anywhere. And some of your weekends, like the weekends between units are going to be like fully open, but it's just, there's a balance and you'll kind of figure that out pretty quickly. But I would expect at least one of your weekend days to be pretty much all work. Okay. Um, and then second question, you mm -hmm. mentioned that we, um, Unfortunately, I was one of those who did not check the Slack. And so I do have to work on install fest. Um, okay. So is that, that you said that in conjunction with, that's part of what's due tomorrow? Sure. So uh, we're flexible on the due date for that. The reason we say tomorrow is because we want people to get it done. Um, but the install fest process is something that we've written to get your computer set up with all of the stuff that you need to be able to take the course. And the lab for tonight, it's called your dev environment lab. And what it is, is to install this little piece of software in your machine that when you type something into the terminal, it provides a printout of all of the things that we need to check for install fest. You take a screenshot of that printout and you send it in an instructor chat, and we can easily look to see if you've got your computer set up properly. So you'll need to go through install fest, take that screenshot and send it in. If you have problems with install fest, all you have to do is message us an instructor chat and either myself or David, uh, who's in all of your instructor chats, will um, will help you get those issues resolved so that you can take the screenshot. If you come across issues, if it says like you've got some red flags in your install thing when you do that little line, out, that's fine. Don't stress out about that. The stuff that you need for like the first week of the course is stuff that's not going to be a problem to install. It's, I mean, everyone can install VS Code and like the Chrome browser. I'm not worried about that. The other stuff is stuff that's more unit two. We're just trying to get you ready for it now. So if you have problems with install fest, use the instructor chat, send us a message and we'll help you through it. Don't stress out about install fest. We will help you with that. I realize it's stressful installing new things on a computer, especially if it's a new computer. And especially if I'm guessing at least a hand of you, a handful of you have never used the computers that you're using right now for this course because you ordered a Mac because they tell you to use a Mac and you've never used a Mac. So we'll walk you through it. Great okay. questions. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, set a timer to remind yourself to take breaks. If you get stuck on something, just set a quick timer. It said, you know what? 45 minutes. If I haven't figured this out in 45 minutes, I'm going to stop. I'm going to get up. I'm going to go walk and take a break and then follow through with that. 
I, I'm telling you, 90% of the time you do that, you're going to think of what the issue was while you're out, once you've let your brain cool off a little bit, and you'll remember whatever it is that you're trying to think of while you're out on your walk. Um, also, keep a piece of paper and a pen next to your bed when you sleep at night, because you're going to wake up in the middle of the night thinking, that's how you solve that problem. And if you don't do that, you'll forget by the time you go back to sleep and wake back up. So I know it sounds ridiculous, but just trust me on this one. Put a pen and a paper by the side of your bed. Um, another way to cope with a lot of this is to identify methods for dealing with stress. Uh, one of our icebreaker questions used to be, "What's a, what do you do to, to deal with stress? Um, and it's everybody deals with stress a little bit differently, but know how you handle stress, know how to mitigate that and be ready because it's going to be stressful. Okay. I'm not telling all of this to you to scare you. That's not the purpose of this slideshow. The purpose of this slideshow is to be real with you. That is my job. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the absolute God's honest truth about everything we do uh, because I that's the way that you get shit done. Honesty makes things work a lot faster than trying to cover things up. So you're going to get 100% pure honesty from me all the time when it comes to this stuff. Okay. Communicate. Help one another. Okay. If you see that somebody's struggling with something, hop in there, share in that struggle with them. They're going to gain, you know, that that camaraderie and that like it's so much nicer when somebody else is helping you with something and you're struggling on it together. Um, it's also really great when you eventually figure it out that you have this group that can now celebrate that win together. Um, you know, we very much want to uh, emphasize that you are spending time in groups, working together, solving things. Obviously we want everybody to learn the things they need to learn individually, but working in groups is a great way to get there. Um, the engineering channel, which is something that we'll introduce in official capacity on Wednesday uh, is a great opportunity to be able to get practice posting about a problem. Hey, here's an issue I had when I was coding. Here's the code block. This is what I've tried solving. This is what I've tried. This is where I've looked this up. I'm stuck trying to make X, Y, and Z happen. Help. And then other people will come in, you know, including your instructors and say, hey, have you tried this yet? Hey, you misspelled this in this line, or hey, uh, I think you've got your controller function set up wrong, or you know your router's pointing at the wrong thing. Like we will help with that, and that's part of why that channel exists, so that you can get some practice using, um, you know, a, a an avenue for being able to uh, disseminate information amongst each other in a thoughtful and effective way. Um, teaching someone is the best way to learn something yourself. So, uh, help yourself. It, it, it is almost impossible to over communicate with us. Um, I would rather you tell me all the things than not tell me enough of the things, uh, your surveys that we'll talk about. I want you to be as vocal in those as possible because the comments and the feedback that you give us shape how we do things and how we build things moving forward. So all of the decisions that we've made to make changes to the curriculum and how we approach delivering the curriculum are coming from feedback that we've gotten from students. So keep it coming. Um, this last line is probably the most line, most important line in this entire spreadsheet, which is why we have it in big red text on the next page. Okay. We can't help you if we don't know there is a problem. Okay. If you are suffering in silence and not letting us know that there's a problem, I can't do anything to help you. Okay. If you're quiet and you're just, your brain feels like it's mush and you feel like you're on the edge and you want to quit, but you haven't said anything to us, you're doing it wrong. You got to say something. You've got to get over that pride and, or whatever it is that you've, you're feeling and just talk to us. Okay. We've seen everything. Okay. I've helped people through this course that have never used their computers before. Like it's day one. I just got this Mac. I just took it out of the box. I've never used a Mac before. I've gotten people like that through the course. Like I can help you. You just need to talk to me. Okay. Um, pacing suggestions. Don't fall behind. Okay. Set your goal at 100% lab completion. What percentage do you need to be able to move on to the next unit? Does anybody know that? 
what's the official number? You can just blur it out. Is it like 80? It's 80, yes. Don't set your bar at 80. Set your bar at 100. And the reason why is that the stuff that we've deemed important enough to be a deliverable is stuff that you need to know how to do and stuff that you're going to rely on in future lessons as, oh, I need an example of how to write a controller function that is responsible for creating a resource, okay? I'm going to go look at the lab where I did that, okay? If you don't have that lab because you didn't do it, shut yourself in foot. So set your goal at 100% for lab completion. Um, if you start to put things off, they're going to pile up very quickly, okay? This first unit, you're going to have a deliverable either every day or every other day, and they're going to start piling up. If you don't get them done on time, they're going to pile up, you're going to get stressed out, and you're going to not feel good, okay? Just looking at Notion, um, I can look at the deliverables here for this week, and let's see. So you're going to have a deliverable due tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Monday, and Friday. And then you have two more deliverables due next uh, next Friday. Or that's Thursday. So you're going to have deliverables due more than half of every day in the next two weeks. Okay. So don't fall behind on that stuff. Um. You can sometimes complete the setup steps from lecture uh, in the calendar ahead of time. If you feel like at the beginning, uh, some of the setup steps that we go through for lecture are taking you longer because you're not really familiar with the terminal or you know command line stuff, um, go through them ahead of time. All the setup instructions are there already. They have been for six months. Okay, we We wrote all that stuff to make it easier for everybody to follow along. If you need extra time with it, Open it earlier and just get it done ahead of time. Um, there are level up resources that we're going to talk about when we talk about Notion. And if you feel like you're on top of your shit and you're feeling good and you're ready to go and you want to learn some more, then go do the level ups. Okay. It's extra content that's not necessarily required, but will help you step your game up. Okay. The calendar will always have the next few days of material listed. The way I run my calendar, you'll have access to all of week one or all of unit one. And then we get to unit two, I'll, I'll unlock all of unit two. So you'll have access to the full unit that we're currently in as soon as we start that unit. Um, don't fall behind, don't fall behind, don't fall behind. And don't be afraid to ask questions publicly. Um, I had a girl two cohorts ago named Catherine uh, who never wanted to ask questions, but was the only one that asked questions. It was a really quiet cohort. I only had like nine students in that one. And she reached out to me one day and she's like, I don't like that I'm the only one asking questions. Um, and there were three other people in the class that were like, you can't stop asking questions because you're asking all the questions that we have too. So keep asking them. And she got over it after that, realizing that she was actually helping other people out. But when you have those questions, just ask them. Somebody else has that same question, I guarantee it. Probably a handful of other people have that question. So if you're the vocal one and you wanna ask that question, you should, and it helps everybody out, okay? You'll be able to rewatch all of the recordings, including this recording that we're doing right now. Um, there's a lecture recordings link that's provided in the course hub. You can access that via Notion. Um, Seeing things for a second time at your own pace can help with tricky topics. Um, and you'll also be able to uh, just kind of get a feel for, I mean, you can always go back and look at other recordings. I wouldn't go too far back because a lot of the lesson contents change. But like if you're looking at examples of previous co cohorts projects, that's a great place to do that because all of the presentations are recorded too. So you can check out all the other students' recordings on uh, on the YouTube channel. Um, if you're a slow typist, which a lot of you did pretty well on your typing scores, so either you're good liars or you're really good typists. Um, but if you're a slow typer, uh, you should definitely work on that. Go to one of those sites uh, to practice. 
And you make sure that you're prioritizing shortcuts once I start teaching them to you. I'm a stickler about shortcuts. Whenever we have a cool shortcut that's going to save you like writing half a dozen lines of code with like two letters, I'm going to teach you um, because they're massive time savings. So use shortcuts. Nate. Hey, uh, sorry, real quick. So just mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, typing speed, um, if you hit the mark that it was asking for, would you say that you probably don't need this? I mean, yeah. obviously, no, everybody could be better, but. Yeah. The people that should be worried are the people that are like 10 to 15 words per minute. So if, if realistically, if you're under 30, like step your game up a little bit. Cool. Um, reading is, as those of you RuPaul Drag Race fans will appreciate this. Reading is fundamental. Okay. You have to read, you're going to read in this course. You're going to read, read, read in much different context than what Rue is talking about here. But it's, you're going to be doing a lot of reading in this course. Um, you're going to be reading documentation for different technologies that we learn. Um, you're going to be reading instructions for lessons and following them. Part of the install fest is like we look at whether or not you know how to read instructions from top to bottom and follow instructions and actually read what is written. Um, it's pretty easy for us to see when you're going through and installing something if you've skipped a section because you didn't read things logically. And um, we learn a lot about everybody from that. So follow the instructions. Um, don't be afraid to Google. I, you're going to Google stuff every day. I promise. It's how do I do this in JavaScript? And you're going to find a method to do whatever it is you're looking for. You'll read the documentation on the method, and then you'll implement it in your programs. Um, Aya? Speaking of looking up stuff, how do we feel about using chat GBT? I wouldn't. Okay. And I'll tell you why when we get to plagiarism. The, the long and short of it is it, chat GPT is great for some things but it's not good for writing intro code because it takes your ability away to learn how to write code. Okay. Chat GPT is absolutely fantastic for, Hey, I have this data that I need to look that I have that looks like this. I need it to look like this. Help me make it look like that. Or, Hey, I need a introductory paragraph about this topic that focuses on this, this, and this chat GPT is fantastic for that. What chat GPT is not good for if you are learning how to code is, hey, write a program for me that does this, because that takes away all of your opportunity to be able to go ahead and look at this stuff and learn it on your own. Um, being my 12th or 13th cohort, if you cheat on your project, I will know. And it's not really hard to see because there's a certain way we teach you how to do things. And if you're not doing it the way we showed you, it's going to be blatantly obvious that you've cheated and you'll get kicked out of the program and it, you won't be able to come back and we're going to have to have a conversation that neither of us wants to have just don't do it we'll we'll talk more about plagiarism when we talk about the project but the code that you write in this course needs to be code that you wrote not chat gpt so there are places to use chat gpt writing code for you for your labs and your homework is not it and if you have questions on that, let me know. I'm more than willing to have an open discussion about what you can use it for, what you can't use it for, um, where it's effective, where it's not effective. Um, we actually have a, a part as part of the bonus content for this course, um, uh, generative AI. It's like a two or three hour lesson that they added. I haven't looked through it yet, but it's... Um, if you're interested in like some of that stuff, you're more than welcome to, to check that out as well. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about chat GPT when we get to plagiarism. So great question. Um, errors are there to help you embrace them, love them, love your errors. They're going to, they'll show you the way. Um, you should always have notion up during live lectures. Um, the course is split. I know when you were in enrolling, they probably told you it was probably going to be about 40, 60 or 50, 50 live lecture versus async lecture where you're learning on your own watching videos and we're, we're here to help you. Um, that's not the case. You're probably going to be getting about 80% live lecture, which is 
in my opinion, way, 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 way better um, because you're not going to be off sequestered in your own little room. We're going to be learning as a group and everyone's going to be asking questions and I'm going to be demoing things and being able to stop and answer questions. Um, uh, again, full transparency, the last cohort absolutely hated the async stuff um, just because it was kind of a it, it, hard to follow. It was disjointed. Um, David is actually on the product team fixing a lot of that right now. And I've been helping him do that. So we're, it's getting better, but in order to mitigate that getting better, um, you just get awesome instruction from me, which you're lucky for. So we'll have good times with it. Um, but yeah, you're, you're going to have a lot of really awesome content. We'll have fun with it. But while you're learning, you have to have Notion open because all of our lesson content is going to be in Notion. Um, and then follow written directions is a foundational skill as a developer. Um, staying organized is important. We want to make sure that our code directories, our GitHub are all organized. We're going to show you how to create folders for your bookmarks and your browser. Um, Notion is also great for taking notes personally, if that's something you're interested in. Um, you're already going to be using it for the day, so it's kind of a great place to throw notes if you want to take notes. You do not have to take notes. In fact, a lot of people I would recommend against taking notes because when you're taking notes, it stops you from coding along and you want that muscle memory. That muscle memory is more important than writing other things down. But I acknowledge that other people learn differently than I do, so do what suits you. Um, keep your physical space organized. You shouldn't have anything around you that you don't need at your desk, especially if you're a fidgety person. Um, I keep my bottle of water on a coaster and that's it. I can't reach anything else on my desk because I will be distracted if I do. Um, so make sure you're doing that. Oh. Outcomes, uh, do your outcome stuff on time. Start networking now. Start events with the class, share events with the class. Um, you're going to get out of outcomes what you put into outcomes. Your outcomes meetings are going to be weekly at noon uh, central, so 1 Eastern. Uh, they'll be immediately following lunch every Thursday. So you'll go into a separate outcome Zoom room, and uh, Portia will um, take care of you all there. Trust the process. Um, we'll have some quizzes and timed assessments throughout the course. Um, quizzes are going to count as deliverables. You'll get credit for completing them. Doesn't matter what you score on them. You can get zero questions right, and you will still get 100% credit for completing the quiz. The quiz is a self-knowledge thing. We want to make sure that you are on top of what you know and what you don't know. So the quiz isn't a... It's pass fail. If you do anything on it, if you submit a quiz, you pass the quiz. Okay. And what happens is when you submit the quiz, you're going to get an email saying you missed this, this many questions and it'll tell you how you did. So you can use that as a self study tool to say, oh, I missed like five of these seven array iterator methods. I should probably go and study those. We see the results, obviously, and we can reach out and say, hey, you missed five out of those seven array met uh, iterator methods. Like what? WTF, and we'll have a conversation about it, but we're not penalizing people. It's meant as a tool to help, not as a tool to break you down. So that's what we use quizzes for in this course. Um, they're just a great way to gauge your understanding of the stuff that we've talked about and just make sure that you're pacing properly for the stuff that we, we've we taught. Um, there'll be a timed assessment at the end of units one and two. Again, they count as deliverables, but if you turn any code in, you pass, even if your code doesn't work. Um, the, the difference here, the quizzes are all multiple choice, but the assessment is you're going to build an app. You have three hours to build a simple application and make it do something. Um, and that kind of turns the pressure dial up a little bit to get you ready for what you're going to have to do for technical interview practice. Um, the, the apps that you're going to have to build are put a box on a screen, like an input box, and make it so that when you push a button, the number goes up. It's not like go build Twitter in three hours. It's very simple stuff, but it's gauging your ability to do all of the absolute basic things we talked about during the unit. 
Ellie? Um, so question about the quiz and the timed assessment. Are mm -hmm. we allowed to like go through our notes when we're when we have the three hours or the I'm not sure how long the mm -hmm. quizzes take, but we're able to okay. With quizzes, I recommend taking them based on what you currently know and not looking stuff up because okay. it's a good frame of reference. Like, do I know this? Do I not know this? Do I need to know go and like you know, yeah. recover this to learn it better. With assessments, you uh, it's open everything except for other people. You can right. look at you can Google, you can look at videos, you can look at all recordings, you can look at code you've written, you can look at code I've written. The only thing you can't do is talk to other people. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. At, you'll see after we do the assessment, I, like I walk through a solution for it and it takes about five minutes. Okay. So it, you have three hours. But yeah. it should take five to 10 minutes if you know what you're doing. So to build the uh, whole entire app? Yeah. Oh, okay. It, they're not hard. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're stressful. People overthink them. That's the problem. Oh. It's they're like 10 lines of code. So oh. it's but everyone overthinks it and it takes a while. There are also lots of bonuses. We put bonuses on those people that want to suck up and go the extra mile, which is that's what I do. I, I like to pull oh, let me make mine better. So <laughs> You have some fun to have some fun on those as well. Okay, great. Thank you. Communication. Best way to reach us is always, always, always via Slack. If you email me, I'm not going to respond because I don't read my email. I check my email maybe once a week because I Slack is how we talk to each other. Um, fully available 9 a.m. Eastern to 5 p.m. Eastern. I If you Slack me outside of those hours, 90% chance I will respond. I have it tied to my Apple Watch. So uh, every time somebody slacks me, I get a little bing bong and I'm very, very good about responding to bing bongs. Um, I'm not guaranteeing responses outside of those hours, but I probably will because I, I, that, I, it, that's me. Um, if you have an emergency, please send me a message on Slack. Even if it's, I don't know, God forbid, like have to go to the hospital won't be in class. Like, just let me know that something's happening. And so we're not worried about you. Well, I mean, we'll be worried about you, but like, just let us know what's going on. Okay. And Slack is the best way to do that. If you have an emergency come up, throw it in your instructor chat. Um, all of you should be in a channel called 23-8-21- your name dash instructors. Uh, and we're going to go through and take your preferred names that you gave us during the slide deck intro today and adjust the channel names to match those. So if your preferred name isn't there yet, hold up and let us know. And if you don't see it by the end of the day tomorrow, just pop your name in there and say, hey, my preferred name is this and we'll fix the channel name for you. Um, by the way, with the Slack channel, I think we talk about, yeah, we talk about Slack channels here in a second. With feedback, um, be abundantly clear. Uh, use simple, direct, and brief language. Get your point across, but be kind and provide feedback with good intention. Um, make sure your feedback is timely. If I do something in an lecture, in a lecture like, and you take three weeks to say something about it, I, you're not giving me an opportunity to correct the things that have, you know, upset you. Like, let us know about that. There's a feedback survey that you have every single week, and then two or three times in the course, we're going to have big old surveys where you get to write paragraphs about us if you want. Um, I want y'all to be open and as honest as possible on those surveys. If you want to leave them anonymously, you can leave them anonymously, but that's how we get feedback. That's how we get better. That's how we grow as instructors. So that feedback is really important to us. Um, and there's a time and place for that we'll talk about. Um, Let's talk about, you know what, let's take a little break real quick and we'll talk about Slack channels. Be back in 12 minutes. So be back at 15 after. All right. <clears throat> let's get, keep this party going here. Um, you will notice in Slack that you are hopefully in a series of channels. Um, you should all be in all of these channels. Uh, that we're going to go over here in just a second. And if you're not, what I want you to do is not in one of the channels. 
please type your name and the channel you're not in to reply to this message. So I'm going to go over these channels and I'm going to kind of, kind of give you a synopsis as to what they are going to be for. Okay. The first thing that you should all be in, hopefully you're all in this one, because that's the one I've been sending all the messages in, is the SEIR 821 East Coast Classroom. Okay. This is our main classroom channel. This is where daily announcements, reminders, attendance questions um, will all be sent. Okay. Probably the most important channel that you're in, because this is where most of the communications between us and you will happen. Okay. Um, you should also be in the SEIR 821 East Coast Engineering Channel. This is the hub for all things debugging. Um, when you come across an issue you can't resolve, you're going to want to post the code there following the guidelines that we talk about. We have a little lecture where we talk about engineering post guidelines. Um, and if you know the solution to somebody else's post, it's encouraged that you respond and say, hey, actually, it's this. You should go try this. Outcomes is SEIR 821 EC Outcomes. That's where you and Portia will be talking about all your outcome stuff. Uh, you're in the SEIR, the 23821 Your Name Instructors channel. Um, that is your instructor chat. The people in that chat are you, myself, Jurgen, and David. Uh, again, David Stinson is my best friend. He's also an instructor that has been here for quite a while. He was one of my first students. Uh, and he is the install fest guru. So as you're doing install fest, if you have questions, I will be forwarding those questions to him in your instructor chat. So that's why we want you to ask them there. Um, he'll also probably come do a couple of guest lectures or two over the course of the cohort. So he's a, uh, he's a hoot. You'll love him. Um, those are those channels. Is there anybody that isn't in any of those channels so far? I've found one. I'm making theirs now. Okay. I think it's okay. Matt doesn't have one for he the does. uh, for the Slack. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I can like give me my question from earlier. No, an instructor uh, chat. Everybody has their own uh, instructor channel where they're uh, with me, Ben, David. Yeah, he's got one. Yes. Am I not in it? Or am I, am I just glancing? Right there. Thank you, Ben. Cool. All right. Um. Anyway, that's what you can use to talk to your instructors and not other students. So if you have a, an issue you want to talk to just the instructors about, like, hey, I have a meeting that I need to be gone for, or like I had something come up, there's, you know, whatever, talk to us in there. Don't put that in the main channel classroom. Um, there's a presentations channel. We'll talk about that more at the end of unit one, but that's a place where we can go to all just say wonderful things about the people's projects that are being presented. Uh, just gives us a good place to be able to talk about each of those things and like, you know, give props to people that, um, are doing good stuff. Cool. Yeah. Uh, potent quotables. If somebody says something funny, throw it in potent quotables. It's just a fun place to track weird things that people say. People are going to say stupid shit in this course all the time, mostly me. Um, but when it happens, throw it in there. It's always a good, fun place. Uh, off topic, talk about anything you want. Uh, food, fitness, gaming, pets, fluffy rhinos, whatever safe for work topic uh, your heart desires. There are a series of other channels that we'll go over when we go over Notion. Um, but there's a chat for gaming. There's uh, food and cooking. Uh, I manage a college basketball channel for it's not going to get much use out of that right now because it's, uh, oh, no, we will this cohort. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Y'all are going to have to deal with a crazy Kansas Jayhawk fanatic. We're going to have a good team this year. 
but if any of you are into college basketball, we're, we'll talk. Uh, it's going to be a good good year for us. Um, but there's channels for everything. There's also a RuPaul's Drag Race channel. If any of you are into that show, I, I'm obsessed with that show now. We had a couple of cohorts ago, students built a drag queen app, a drag queen tracker app. And it's like, but yeah, good stuff. But there's a channel for everything. And if there's not a channel for something you see, let me know and I'll build one for you. Because I want y'all talking to each other because that's super important. Um, graduation requirements. This is just, we have to talk about this stuff. You have to meet the requirements, get satisfactorily complete and present a project for each of the four units. One of your units will be a group project. That will be unit three for your React project. Um, uh, don't stress out about it being a group project. In 12 cohorts, I've had one group fail. So it's not, and it's because they wouldn't talk to each other because they were children. Like, you're going to be fine. Don't don't let the group project stress you out. It's stressful, but it's not that stressful. Um, maintain a completion rate of at least 80% on all deliverables throughout the course. Don't let that dip below 100. Just get shit done. 100%. 100%. Don't let it pile up. You'll be fine. Okay. Attendance policy. You're allowed three attendance uh, or three absences over the course total um this is a hard and fast rule because there's accreditation requirements if you don't have a certain number of hours in the course you can't get your certificate so this isn't me being an asshole saying oh well, you missed four days you can't graduate this is like regulatory stuff so please tell us when you have something coming up so we can try to help mitigate that and fudge where we can if necessary to make sure that you get all of your hours. Um, but you're allowed three absences, three tardies or three early departures each count as an absence. Um, that includes outcomes as well. And then remember to be present and keep your camera on. If I can't see your face during a lecture, you're going to be marked absent. Okay. I have to be able to see your face. Because if I can't see your face, I don't know that you're there paying attention. That's part of the deal. Part of online learning is me being able to see you. So if there's a reason that you don't want me to see you, say something, we'll work out an agreement. But I need to know that you're engaged. And the only way that I have to do that right now is to see your face. So, uh, And then tuition, I have nothing to do with this, but your tuition has to be paid in full by the end of the course, yada, 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 yada. Your responsibilities as a student, foster a productive classroom environment, treat others with respect and dignity. Remember that everyone is coming at this with a different background, professionalism and all methods of communication, both on Zoom and Slack. Slack is an extension of our Zoom classroom. We ask that you remain courteous, respectful, and professional. And there is zero tolerance for plagiarism and cheating, which we have a whole slide for. Okay. <clears throat> Plagiarism is wildly serious when it comes to code development uh, and is grounds for immediate withdrawal. We are going to talk about this again before your unit one project. We're bringing it up now because of chat GPT. Um, you're encouraged to ask others, including students and instructors and Stack Overflow for help. Okay. It is not acceptable to copy another person's code and submit it as your own. Okay? More importantly, it's detrimental to your learning and your growth as a developer. Okay? On that note, if you're working through something together and you have the same solution, that's okay. okay? If you're in a room, you know, Bobby and Susie are in a room together and you know, they're talking through the solution to their code and they end up with the same exact code, that's fine. Okay. That's acceptable. What's not acceptable is Susie's been in a room for something, writing code for two hours. Bobby comes in. He's like, Hey, what's up, Susie? You got some code? And then Susie shares the code with Bob. Bob turns in Susie's code, having not worked on it at all. That is a problem. Okay. Um, it, it, the whole reason we have you work on groups is so that you can bounce ideas off to each other or bounce ideas off of each other and talk to each other and interact and learn and grow from that discussion, uh, which is why it's okay to do that. Um, don't just copy other people's code, okay? Especially when it comes to projects. Like 
Many of you will be working on the same unit one project. You'll pick the same browser-based game to build. You'll know how to find each other's repos. If you go to someone else's repo and copy all their code so that your game works, we're going to see that. We're <laughs> It's not easy to just like pull the wool over our eyes with that. Like we're really good at finding when people cheat. Um, the same thing with like, I, I want to build a browser-based game. I'm building a quiz game in JavaScript. If you Google how to build a quiz game JavaScript and just go through a tutorial to build your game, we're going to know. And it's blatantly obvious because people don't even bother to like scroll in the Google search. They'll pick the set, the first one and then build a tutorial. And it's just like, we didn't teach you any of this code. And then we have to kick you out of the class and just, just don't do that. Just don't cheat. Just talk to us. Okay. It's, it's okay to use snippets that you find. Like if you need code to format a date in a certain way and you find that code online, that's fine. You just attribute the code to where you found it. Say, I needed some code to format a date in this specific fashion. This is the method I used. This is where I found it. That's cool. You just can't use all of the code from somewhere else. Walter? Oh, I guess that's what my question was. I guess I was asking, like, when we're doing these, like, projects and assignments, like, obviously, you guys are going to teach us a certain way how to do a code. You think it'd be beneficial to just try to keep it to just stuff we learn in class or are we allowed to like, you know, go outside of class and then search of different method? Like let's say I'm struggling with something that you taught and, you know, we've gone over it and I still haven't like been able to fix my code. Am I allowed to like, you know, search of other ways to search sure. that code? Yes and no. Uh, the yes with that is, uh, you know, sometimes at the beginning, especially at the beginning, um, we will <clears throat> encourage you to go and look things up like, hey, there's a method that you could use to solve this. Why don't you go explore that? And you're going to see some, like unit one, we see a lot of variations to how, how people solve problems creatively. Um, totally fine. What we don't want is straying from a lot of the, um, like the foundational stuff, like the architecture yeah. of how we build apps. So for example, when we eventually get into building a game in the browser, there's going to be some sort of initialization function where your DOM elements are established and cleared. You're going to have some sort of click handler or event listener that is set up. I know, I know y'all don't know what this means right now that uh, this is over your heads, but it's okay. It, it Some sort of event listener so that when you interact with the page, some sort of state is changed. And then there's a render method, which displays the changed state to the screen. There's a flow of it. If you don't have that flow, that's a red flag because it's counter counterintuitive to literally everything yeah. that we've taught you. It's that kind of stuff. It's not like All right. your function needs to be spaced exactly this. I give a shit about yeah. that. It's it's it, the stuff I'm talking about is more like the, the foundational stuff and unit one. It's a little harder to like balance that because you're going to see a lot of stuff out on the web units, two, three, and four. There's only one way to do it. And it's the way we teach it. So that shouldn't be as, as hard to follow that, <clears throat> but right. Thank we'll, you. We'll, we'll talk yeah. a lot more about this as we come up. This is just kind of an intro to that, but great question. Thank you. Cool. Brooklyn. Hi. So I was curious, one way that I've used chat in the past is, and obviously I'd be able to do this to you in TA hours, which would be awesome, mm -hmm. but it's taking my code that I've been trying to make work and putting it in there and asking it why it's not working. Is that still a good thing to oh, do yeah. outside of TA hours? Okay. Yeah, that's uh, totally good to do that. Um, I, it, you're okay to do that. But what I would recommend is trying to use methods to debug your code because mm -hmm. those methods are going to help you become a better developer. Um, Chat yeah. GPT is great for that. But it, for example, why is this code not running? You could ask Chat GPT or you could put a console log in a certain part of your code and say, is my console log showing up? And if it's not, then you have to think, okay, why is my console not show? Like you're going through and like testing different pieces of your code, trying to find a solution. That analytical mindset and testing mentality will help you much more than chat GPT will. But there's nothing wrong with using chat GPT for that, especially because it's not like, what's the answer? But I think that again, it you'll benefit more from strategic analytical troubleshooting and uh, like trying to get to the answer by 
manipulating your code and figuring out how to test it than you will just by throwing it in a box somewhere. But both accept. Awesome. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, again, the biggest rule with plagiarism is just just ask us if you think something's might potentially be plagiarizing. Just just ask us. We'll tell you. You're not going to get in trouble for asking. You will get in trouble if you plagiarize something and don't say anything. So better safe than sorry. Questions? What questions do we have? You just come off of mute. I had a question yeah. about, so what about things like um, doctor's appointments and things like that, mm -hmm. um, that don't take a whole day, but maybe like an sure. hour? Uh, if you have a doctor's appointment, shoot us a message like the, a day or two before uh, in your instructor chat and say, hey, I've got a doctor's appointment. It's going to be from this time till this time. This is what class I expect to be missing. And we'll get you up, with, set you up with a game plan. Usually it's going to be, just make sure you watch the YouTube videos. If it's async stuff, it'll be make sure that you do your async lessons. Let us know if you have any questions. Um, and uh, and we'll go, we'll go from there. If it, you're only missing a partial day, we'll make sure that you don't get dinged for the whole day. So we're reasonable when it comes to that stuff. Again, we're human beings. We're not going to mark you absent for a whole day if you just have a doctor's appointment. But let us know ahead of time. Don't let us know after the fact because trying to track people down is just wasteful. Cool. Good question. How much of this course did they tell you was going to be live versus async? Just curiously. 80%. They said 80% was going to be async? Yeah. Um, when I did my admissions call, yes. Yeah. Well, you're very lucky that it's going to be a complete opposite from that. You don't want the async so I meant stuff. 80% yeah. sync, sync. Okay. 80% live, 20. Okay. Perfect. That's about what it should be. Cool. Um, question. Yeah. Uh, probably a stupid question. Async is like the. Um the work that we just do on our own. Right? Yes. Yeah. Like it, the asynchronous, yeah, asynchronous okay. stuff is you've got, it's very much like the pre-work. You'll have videos that you watch and then do exercises. And if you have questions, you flag one of us down, but that's. For this it's, time, it's not going to be like that. It is not. It's, no. You'll have maybe 20% of that. We're not doing any of that in unit two or unit three because they're not done building the content for unit two or unit three yet. So, um, okay. yeah. Okay. But yeah, it's, I, I promise it's going to be way better this way. So you don't know me well enough to know that I'm like super passionate about this stuff, but I promise like a month I, from now, you're going to be like, Oh, the live stuff is so much better than the async. I promise. Yeah. I'm excited because I'm a visual learner. So this is good. You'll do way better with the live stuff if, you, if you're a visual learner. So yeah. Okay. I will say that a lot of the people that were that did enjoy the async stuff where it's very much on your own are people that are kind of more advanced. Um, oh, if you feel like you're bored with stuff, let me know and I'll give you more exciting things to go look at. There's plenty of that. So just hit me up. I want everyone engaged and having fun. So. Okay. I will do that. Other questions? Bring them on, come on. Cool. Okay. Um, let's take a moment and make sure everybody's Slack is set up. Uh, I need everyone to go into their Slack and go to their profile. You can click on the little icon up where your face is. And then go to profile. You're gonna edit your profile. That's date. Well, that's not actually David. That's an AI picture of David. I hate that picture, but I need to go change that. David is a robot. So. Yeah. What we need from everyone is that you go and change your profile so that you have your full name uh, with your preferred name in there, obviously. Uh, so your preferred name, your pronouns, your metro area, and the uh, cohort that you're in. So SEI 821. 
Okay. Upload a, a photo of yourself using those guidelines. It should be work appropriate. You should clearly be the subject of the photo. I, cat photos are fun. Dog photos are fun. I've got dogs and cats, but the dog and the cat are not the one on Slack. You are. So please make sure that it shows who you are. The reason that we do this is because it's going to help other people learn who you are and they'll learn your names faster and you'll be able to connect a lot more effectively. Okay. Um, photos should be a decent representation of yourself. Don't use something that's overly artistic or extremely outdated. Okay. Um, that'll take a couple minutes, but just following up on that, um, there's only one slide left after this. There are three holidays during the course, um, Friday, September 1st, Monday, September 4th. So you're going to have a four-day weekend coming up. Um, the first is it's a GA employee holiday. So y'all still are going to have work to do that day. You're going to have to submit your project planning materials, I think. I'm still going to be grading things that day. It's just the GA wants to give its employees a holiday. So I'll still be looking at your project proposal submittal, stuff that you submit. Um, Monday is a full holiday. It's Labor Day. So be cool and have fun. And then Friday, you're going to have off for Veterans Day. Walter? I did have a question. Um... What what's the plan with the whole like code pen thing? Like, are we gonna like present it to each other in class or? Oh, know. for the uh, lapis yeah, the little like scapulas, yeah, a little project. No. Just... No? no, we're gonna rebuild that as part of a lesson that we do in unit one oh, and act right. actually do it better. Um, yeah, the the reason we do that is a couple fold. One, we want to make sure that people are, are coming into the program with at least a little bit of knowledge about. JavaScript, yeah. HTML, CSS, and that um, they're able to follow instructions and uh, just kind of get a base understanding for how this stuff works. We're actually going to go through and rebuild that entire thing with rock, paper, scissors with um, better code conventions. So it's pretty cool. No, yeah, I just thought the whole like project was like cool. Like I was trying to like build like little reset buttons and like sport trackers. And I just thought it was cool and fun. We will do exactly that in that lesson. So buckle up. So cool. Um, it looks like in Notion, uh, I'm supposed to talk about Notion. So let me talk about Notion and make that a separate video.